thing they don't tell you when you have a baby is, is uh, uh, your child has to reach certain milestones. And my daughter, Maddie, was beautiful and she was sweet and she was like a super happy baby. But um, by 15 months, she was not even like walking, talking, or even um, crawling. She was not reaching her milestones. We start getting nervous. We start having test after test. Sometime year two, she's diagnosed with autism. Now, at that point, I'm not going to try to pretend that I didn't feel a punch in the gut because I'd had these dreams and fantasies of what my daughter was going to achieve, then I'm being told, well, there's a good chance that she'll never have a full-time job or a close relationship with someone. There's a great chance she'll live with you the rest of her life. Now, at this point, I moped around for a couple weeks, and then it dawned on me, I kind of had an epiphany, well, these aren't her dreams and fantasies, these are mine. I need to help her live her dreams and fantasies if I want to be a real man. So I went back to that clinic. This time I brought my own inspirational materials. Because <laughs> I felt like we needed to have somebody there to look after her best you know, interests when we pass away. And the clinic this time goes, hey, fuck you, you're gonna have twins, yeah. It's not funny. No, I was 40 years old looking at twins. That is too old, yeah. Thank God my wife's 19. That part's okay. Right? Yeah, she's not. That's a joke. She's 39. But I treat her like a trophy wife. I do. Thank you. Yeah, ninth place. And um, Yeah, I lost a gender. I had an angry woman come up to me one time. She's like, you better watch it, buddy. Your fi wife finds out about that joke. You're not going to get any sex. I'm like... You know, thanks for your concern, but you don't really pay close attention to what I say in my show. I have a girl with special needs, baby twins. Sex is kind of like sushi at Long John Silver's. <laughs> it's not on the menu for me, I can tell you. Now, I feel like it's kind of my duty as a parent of a child with special needs to kind of inform you about what that life is like. I mean, people probably think, well, your child's nothing like you. Well, no, that's not true at all. They have traits. My daughter does just like any our other children. I mean, example, my daughter is much like my wife. She loves to have a schedule. She demands that schedule. And when that schedule is not met, she's a total bitch, just like my wife. <laughs> but on the other hand, she's like me because she loves to do and say inappropriate shit at all times. <laughs> and here's an example of that. Uh, I bring her everywhere with me. She just turned 10. Uh, and I love to bring her to like clothing stores because she likes clothes. But you never know what Maddie's going to do because even though she's 10, she developmentally is like at a three-year-old level. So last year we went to Abercrombie and Fitch. And I know I'm too old to be there, but okay, I'm there. And um, I'm trying on like a large, which fit like a medium, Because that's their fitting chart, I guess, sizes. And she's in there with me because I don't know what she's going to do. And I'm like, honey, hang out in the dressing room a minute. I want to go around the corner and look on the mirror and see if this works. I'm not out. Five seconds. Streaker comes flying by. Yeah, it's Maddie just wearing her underpants. <laughs> racing through the Amber Carby and Fitch. Now, I don't know if you're aware in the current climate that we live in. It is really frowned upon for a middle-aged dude to try to chase down a half-naked nine-year-old girl in public. Yeah. <laughs> So I had to make a quick decision. And my decision was, hey, she's having a good time. Let her wear herself out. <laughs> and something magical happened at this moment. All the shoppers who were frustrated or tired started laughing, not at her. They were laughing with her because they felt the joy that she had. She was unadulterated. She wasn't afraid of what society felt and judged her by. There was one person that did have a problem, though. Mr. Amber Crabby, working behind the counter, he's like, uh, sir, sir, can you do something about her? Sir, do some." I'm like, uh, okay, what's your name there, buddy? Topher? Okay, Topher. <laughs> First off, congratulations. It looks like you're the homecoming king. Life's turned out pretty well for you. That's nice. <laughs> I don't know if you're aware, but um, my daughter life not quite so easy. So here's what's going to happen for the next minute or so, Topher. You're going to chill the hell out because six-pack abs do not beat angry dad with an attitude. <laughs> and also, there are naked pictures of dudes all over the walls of this Abercrombie and Fitch, and I'm not saying crap. So 
at that point, I finally became a great dad for about a minute, and it felt good. That's just the way life can work, okay? But I don't like to try to sugarcoat it too much. You really do have to be like three steps ahead when you have a child with special needs. Like, I got my kids a dog. I named him Angus, which seemed like a good name for a black lab, right? Well, problem was is Maddie could not pronounce her G's. So Angus was not a good name after all. Oh, the story gets progressively worse. Then I get a call from her teacher one day. So today, Mr. Long, we were discussing things that we love to play with. And Maddie said she loves to play with her anus. So child services will be contacting your anus soup. Yeah. Now I do not have to make up jokes. These are my life. Now, I hope I have earned maybe a minute or two of your time, if I could. Um, at this point, I want to share this. Um, I have been doing comedy for two decades. And my rule of comedy has always been, if you can defend yourself, I will take a swing. But if you can't, I don't see really the sport in that. And that's really been a good informing kind of element for my life. But I believe political correctness does suck the life out of comedy. Having said that, though, there's a couple words you really can't really say in entertainment anymore, or your career could be over in a snap. We've seen it happen. Um, you can't drop N-bombs, and you can't probably say any slurs for gay people. And I think that makes good sense, because it usually says more about the person who says them than the person they're aiming them at. But the people that have the biggest heart attack, if you drop an N-bomb or a gay slur, will throw the words like retard and retarded around like it's going out of style. And I just maybe want to make you rethink these R words for a second. First off, it's really lazy because there's so many other better words to use like asshat or uh, <laughs> fucknuts. Or, uh, my favorite, Paris Hilton, because she spent her life earning it. And it's really weak because you drop an N-bomb, well, you probably might get your ass kicked. And if you drop a slur for a gay dude, you might not only get it kicked, you might get it fucked afterwards. That's just what could happen. <laughs> right. And great if that happens. But you see, there's no retribution when you use the R word, so people just throw them around because no one's going to call them on it. Now, I'm not the political correctness police. I probably said something that offended somebody here tonight. I would never tell you what you can or can't say but I will tell you the one that makes my ears burn. That's the one is this. Quit acting like a retard because when I hear that, I think of this girl here. This is my daughter Maddie who would never judge you on if you're fit or fat, gay or straight, black or white, beautiful or ugly. Here's the crazy thing that she does. She would judge you this way. If you accept her, and give just a little attention to her, she will open up her heart to you and she will love you forever. So all I'm asking is maybe the next time you're reaching in your pocket for one of these R words, maybe you could reach in the other pocket and grab respect because these people really deserve it. Okay, I am done preaching my little message.